In this video, we're going to go over how to work with elements that are simply too wide for your screen. And this most frequently happens with mobile screens. So as we all know, phone screens, smartphone screens are tall and narrow, uh, which might cause problems when you're trying to place elements that simply need to be wider than the screen and to make it work at the, at the same time. So how can you deal with this situation? How can you make this work? We're going to use the following example. So sometimes Sometimes you have an element that is simply wider than the screen and has to be wider than the screen. Usually when you're working with text, you can't go too small, right? So if I, for example, place this set of tags, this set of uh, some elements onto my screen, and then I just make it small enough to fit on my entire screen, that's definitely one, uh, one option. But uh, from a certain size, you are basically risking that your text is not going to be readable. So sometimes even, for example, imagine that this were like three times as, as wide, right? So simply taking this and then scaling this down, that simply wouldn't work. I mean, nobody can read this, right? So this is a phone and this is just way too small. I think we can all agree on that. So what you need to do is use horizontal scrolling and we're gonna use this element still. So just to walk you through the structure that we have here, we have a tag component with two states and then this the instances of this tag component are placed inside an auto layout which is this object that's an auto layout and there is a bunch of them right and one of them is, is active and the remaining ones are not so what you want to do is first of all place the element inside of the screen you're designing for and then what you want to do is take the whole auto layout and scale it down to the width of the screen, right? So that we have 370, 375 on the width. Uh, so what happens now is you get an auto layout that is narrower than the contents of the auto layout, right? So for example, you got frame 20 all the way over here while being a child element of this auto layout right so that's the first thing you need to do so we basically put all of these inside an auto layout and then scaled the auto layout down so step number two would be increasing the horizontal padding so i think i'm gonna go for like 20 24 let's say right to get some spacing on this side and on this side as well and then what i am going to do is create a rectangle and this rectangle is going to be the same width as the margins, right, as these paddings. So that's gonna be 24 in terms of width. Then I'm gonna set the color of this rectangle to the same color as the background of this screen, which is white. Okay, now we have a rectangle that is 24 by 50. Then I'm gonna make sure it's the same height as this element, which is 43. So 43, right? So something that would fit exactly inside of this shaded area, right? So that's 24 by 43. I'm gonna press Command X, select this, and then press Command V. So what happens now is that it moves all the way towards the end of the auto layout. But we don't want to do this. We want to go for absolute position, which you can enable right here. So absolute position. Then I'm going to press option A, which is going to move this element all the way to the left, right? Option A means aligning to the left. And then what I'm going to do, I'm going to go to the fill of this rectangle. I'm going to click on this square right here, and then I'm going to change the solid color to linear, right? So we get a linear gradient. And I'm gonna adjust the position of the linear gradient so that it goes from the left like this to the right. So let's quickly recap what we did. I'm gonna change the background of the screen so that you can see what we created, right? I'm gonna change that to dark gray or mid gray. We have created this rectangle that is going to serve as a fade out when you swipe through um, this rollable auto layout, right? What I'm gonna do then is duplicate this so that I get a second one. Press Shift H, which is going to flip horizontally this rectangle while still being in absolute position. And then I'm gonna press Option D. And this is going to align this 
rectangle to the right. So this is basically what I get. I get an auto layout with all these tags that are placed automatically next to each other, thanks to auto layout. But then I get these two objects, which have an exception from the auto layout called absolute position. And they will always be placed on the left and right of this object. Next thing I'm gonna do is select both of these by pressing command and shift clicking the first one and the second one. And then I'm going to go to constraints and set these constraints to top and bottom, okay? And then with the first one only, with the left only, I am going to select that individually and set, make sure these constraints are set to left and top and bottom. And then the right one are set to right and top and bottom, right? Why are we doing this? When I select this layout and then change the size, first of all, these rectangles change sizes as well, right? But when I scale this down in terms of width, these rectangles stay on their sides. So can you see how we made this work, right? We have this auto layout that goes you know, beyond the screen, beyond the boundaries of this element, but then we get these special objects, which will serve as a fade in for all these objects, right? So you can see how the T is hidden behind the fade in. So that's why we are doing this. I'm gonna make sure it goes exactly to the edges. So now let me set the background of this screen back to white so that, you know, these objects we have just created, that they become invisible, basically. But they are not really invisible, right? Watch how when I change the position of these elements within this auto layout, how for example here it's fading out, which is exactly what we need, and on the right side as well, okay? Now here are the things that we need to do next. We need to set the auto layout to align left and center, right? So it's on the middle line. So now when you scale, this happens, right? So it's basically responsive. When you simply change the size of this object, you get these fade outs that are staying in their place and also the position of these tags is always in the middle. So this is a very useful element that I can now reuse. I can, for example, add this to my design system and I can reuse this across my project. Finally, what I'm gonna do is select clip content so that when you scale this, you can see how nothing is visible outside of these boundaries of this element but the elements are still there, right? So they are still over here, but you just can't see them. You basically can see only what's within these boundaries. So once again, let me go all the way to the edges. And then finally, the final thing we need to do is go to prototype with this selected. And then under overflow, we're gonna select horizontal, okay? Now let's see what happens when we go to prototype. This is what we get, right? You can now take these elements, you can scroll through this. Uh, it's a very, very wide element that goes all the way beyond over here, but we made sure that people can use it still by using an element that enables you to scroll horizontally. So horizontal scroll is the answer to this question, how to deal with such elements. And as you can see, we don't get the fade out. So let me just reset the prototype. Maybe that will help. Or let me just relaunch the prototype altogether. And yeah, probably the reason why it isn't showing up when we are scrolling is because we didn't set these up to be fixed, right? We set this to scroll with parent, but we're gonna set this behavior, scroll behavior to fixed for these two rectangles and right now it should be working as intended, right? You can see the fade out right here and right here. So yep, this is it. I can, for example, now upgrade this to get like sticky stop at top edge. You can now see what happens when I do that. You can do this, for example, let me set the background to white. You can then combine this with sticky scroll behavior to get uh, a situation where you basically use this as a navigation for a specific part of the page. So this is it. This is how you deal with elements that are simply too wide for your screens. If you'd like to learn more about sticky scroll behavior, you should watch this video next. Thanks for tuning in. Leave a like if you found this video useful and I will see you in the next one.